Hey guys, this is me, Avi Devedi, and you are listening to Extended Reality Developers of India Community. Today, we have a guest from the uh, game industry, and he is Bebel Chavan. So don't waste any time, and let's welcome Bebel Chavan. Hi, Bebel. Hi, guys. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Bebel. And uh, I would like to discuss a lot of things about the game industry. And uh, let me just introduce Bebel. So Bebel is a CEO of Underdogs Games and he ran his company in Mumbai. And this is one of India's uh, uh, earliest gaming companies. And he started the company in 2011. And uh, so uh, let's know uh, from Vapo with himself that uh, um, what his company do and everything, everything about Vapo. Okay. So hi Vapo. So Avi, uh, firstly, thanks a lot for having me on this podcast. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a great, uh, um, opportunity to connect with uh, the fellow developers and the people who really want to get into gaming industry. Uh, so I'll give you a quick uh, background about myself. Um, I graduated back in 2007 and uh, for, from 2007 to 2011 I used to work for a few big uh, gaming companies in India, uh, namely uh, Ga India Games, Games to Win, Hangama and uh, in 2011 I started uh, Underdogs. So it actually started as a, as a flash a uh, game development and servicing company. Um, so we used to cater to to the bigger gaming companies, namely all these three uh, companies, which I just mentioned. Along with that, maybe there's uh, companies like Reliance, Zapac, uh, and few of the digital agencies uh, for uh, whom we worked. Uh, and uh, in 2014, I guess we uh, we started, you know, shifting from Flash to uh, to mobile. So that is where it all started. Uh, so we now at this point, it's been like eight years in gaming, uh, running the studio. Uh, and we are into B2B and B2C. So B2B, when I say uh, B2B, it's, um, it's, ma it's majorly making games for other people. Um, when I say other people, it's uh, usually three main sectors, actually four main sectors. Uh, one is uh, people uh, with uh, bigger gaming studios. So companies like Nazara or um, or you know any big company who want to develop their uh, games, who want to outsource their games, so they come to us, and we develop uh, you know a part of their games. Uh, that's one. Second is uh, digital agencies who are connected to brands. So if Colgate or Unilever wants to make a game, they go to a digital agency, and then that digital agency comes to us, and that's that's how it works. Uh, the third one are the movie production houses. Uh, so. Last year, we made a game for Eros, uh, which was uh, the official game for Shubha Mangal Sauda. Uh, then uh, before that, we did uh, did an official game for uh, for Disney, which was Moana, the 3D movie. Uh, and wow. before that, we, we did a lot of work. Uh, so uh, games for ZTV uh, or say a couple of uh, things for Rudy also. So, uh, so some smaller parts also, but it was majorly for the uh, media uh, media industry. Uh, so that's those those are the three sectors. And then the fourth one comes is is, is basically the gamification bit, uh, which is right now in trend, uh, which is like which is booming actually because uh, what is happening is in the first three sectors that I mentioned, uh, people come to us with a solution, so they know how, so they already know what they want to make, so they come to us. And uh, they tell us this is what we want to make. Uh, in the gamification bit, what happens is people come to us with a problem. So they come to us saying that, okay, this is what uh, the process is. We have a very boring process, and we want to convert that process into a very fun and engagement, uh, you know, kind of a thing. So we'll give us a solution to this. So we build, we start from the design phase in that thing, and then we, you know, develop this whole gamification bit for them. So that whole is the b2b and uh, b2c is basically making our own games so we are building few of uh, our own games in in all the uh, platforms uh, so one of the game which is right now we are working on is, uh, is mukti which is uh, planned for pc and consoles it's been a long but uh, that's that's usually the struggle of an indie uh, development studio right um, but along with that we also do some smaller casual and hyper casual games so go couple of games uh, might get might be releasing in say next month or next next month so that's that's the current scenario of the studio so uh Weber, as you already said there is a complete life cycle of a game 
So it starts from uh, the very designing, the very idea, and it goes through all the stages of gaming. And definitely it involves all kind of skills to complete those stages. So we are going to discuss about some of those, the, those skills and some of those stages. So let's first talk about GBD. So there's something called GDD. What is yeah. that? And, uh, what is that part? Let's discuss. Uh, so GDD uh, stands for Game Design Document. Um, game Design Document is like a Bible uh, for creating games. Um, and that is completely taken over by uh, the game designer. So that's that's a game designer's task. Um, so what happens is uh, what happens is usually um, when 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 a, when a game is decided or when a, when a idea is decided in a brainstorming session or whatever, when the idea authorities decide to create a particular kind of an idea based on the statistics or trends or analytics, that the research part is all done. And then the idea is formulated, right? That is where yes, the sir. that is where the GDD creation starts. So it's it's all a game designer's job to start creating a GDD. Uh, now GDD is uh, is 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 uh, is a document where the game designer or a team of game designers uh, put their thoughts in the document or in this document. So why is this important? The first question is why is this document important? So if I'm a game designer, I have thought of something, right? I have thought of an idea. I have thought of, um, you know, all the scenarios in the game, uh, what character should be, uh, what are the levels, how uh, complicated the progression will be and everything regarding the game. Now, all these things are in my head, right? Um, and the next step is to, you know, explain this whole process, this, this whole game to a team of uh, programmer and team of artists, right? So it's very yes. difficult to you know do that in one short meeting. So that is the reason because you have your own idea, you have all the all these things in your head. You need to put down those things in that document so that this document can be referenced by the uh, you know by these people who are actually uh, developing that particular thing. So what happens is yeah. you don't have to uh, come uh, you know again and again explain every part of it. It's just that document that these people refer to and then they you know start creating the game uh, though you as a game designer have to take you know care of the whole production cycle uh, when it comes to you know a, whether the artist is making what uh, is required and what is documented in the document uh, whether the programmer is actually doing what is you know mentioned in the document so that is an iterative process but um, there has to be some documentation which is important and uh, when 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 I say this documentation is important, right? Uh, the game designer, the game designer. Um, so I get a lot of questions when when people say that I want to become a game designer, but I don't know what to do. Uh, so for for me, there are like three important skills that you need to have in a game designer. The the first one is the visualization, obviously, creating worlds and creating characters, writing those things. Um, that's one. But that's a core. But along with that, there are two main skills which are important. The the first one, uh, the second one is, you know, writing skills. So writing everything that you know, everything that you've planned for the game, writing that in a way which is easily communicated to the people just by reading that document. That's the core. So, skill. Uh, how writing these documents is different from normal technical writing? How these are different? Uh, I, I, I didn't get you. So uh, you talked about the writing skills. So what sort of writing skills are required in these documents, uh, which is uh, different from other kind of writing? No, so it's 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 the generic, it's a simple same thing. But what I'm saying is if you think about something, if you think about a concept and if you're not writing it properly uh, as you require it, you know, so there is a there is a miss. Uh, it, it easily it can be said as a miscommunication between the game designer and the game development team you know so that's that's one important aspect the third key uh, aspect of being a game designer i think is uh, to be able to communicate uh, very properly you know communicate that a very uh, fluent way because uh, when the document is shared the game designer's job is to you know um, be in touch with the artists and the programmers continuously to make sure that the things are going right. So 
that uh, that's uh, the third important skill of a game designer so when I, when I, when the, when you are writing a game design document it there is a proper format of writing a game design document right from the overview the scope uh, levels the progression the win and lose scenario uh, the score logic uh, everything so there are, there is a proper format but a typical a normal uh, you know uh, casual normal uh, mobile game uh, gdd can be up to 50 to 60 to even 200 pages so that's how uh, that's how detailed this document has to be uh, also one more thing uh, to add is this document is uh, a never ending document it's an iterative document it, you cannot uh, you you cannot say that i've written a gdd and it's done uh, till the, till the game is shipped this document keeps on updating because uh, there are last minute changes that happen and you have to document those things again in this document so that uh, the, there's one uh, purpose of this thing is if a sequel is to be uh, you know made or a similar ca category or game has to be made this document uh, forms as a you know um, as a as a reference document for those games also exactly so gdd is one next you talk about the scope scope of the game so this is one of the thing mostly people beginners uh, take wrong they try to aim making a, a god of war or something like that so yeah. what is, what is wrong with that what is wrong with the ambitious projects so let's talk about what should be the scope yeah yeah um so the thing is um, uh, a lot of people a lot of uh, early um in their career or a lot of game developers, aspiring game developers, when they when they know stuff, right? Uh, when they know stuff, they start creating a GTA, right? So that's that's the biggest problem. Why why I say it's a problem is because they know things that they uh, understand. Okay, they know things that they understand, but they don't know the things that they don't understand in the game in the gaming process. Uh, they need to research those things. They need to go through that phase first to create a GTA. GTA. Even if you consider, you know, like a uh, like an Angry Birds, uh, there were 50 games that were made before Angry Birds uh, to be that kind of a, you know proper successful game. Um, uh, the thing is, there is that as a new game developer, you just see the you know tip of an iceberg. Exactly. And you 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 imagine that, that that that's it, but there is a whole lot of uh, you know thing which is underneath which you need to understand through uh, through through going through that one process first. So my recommendation always is uh, is to create the smallest bit first from start to end. So one of the biggest um, mistakes that people do is uh, they blow up the scope, uh, which is never ending. Uh, and it results in two things. One is you don't finish the game on time, um, uh, which is which is very bad. Uh, the second thing is this thing demotivates you to a to a very uh, bad level, right? For so, your next project. Yeah. yeah, for your next project. So so the best thing to do is uh, figure out something which is very small, um, a very small game, uh, and start. To end, just go through that process. Just learn that process. Uh, once you're through with that process, uh, then there's time, you know, where you can go ahead and make something better. Uh, but learning that whole process is very important. Um, this is this is, I think, uh, the suggestion that I can give to uh, people who you know blow up the scope. I'll give you one example. Also, um, we wanted to make we wanted to make a mobile game back in 2014. Uh, but we definitely knew, even when we worked for like three years in game development at that time, uh, we were really good at Unity also. So development aspect was very powerful. So we were good at that. Uh, but we wanted to make a mobile game of our own, but we didn't do it unless and until we were very much you know, confident about the whole process. So what we did was we were working for, an, for a company. Uh, so we were working for Game to Win at that time on uh, a parking game. So Parking Frenzy, uh, we were we we were the developers of that game, right? So we worked on that game for a year, and once we you know once we started working on it, we started understanding every aspect of of game making. 
so what is monetization what is um, what is analytics how important analytics is um what are the what are the key terms you should you know track in the game what is retention what is day one retention day seven retention all those things came up in that development um and when we were at the last stages of publishing that game we also learned the process of publishing the game how we should do it what is the soft launch everything so what we learned all those things when we were working for someone else and when we you know got a gist of everything the very first game we made was like a 15 day game a simple 15 day game uh, which was a casual uh, 3d parking game with say like 50 levels which were very simple levels so we just wanted to test uh, our capabilities whether we can you know take a game from scratch and put it up in the market and see the analytics of that game that was the overall objective the biggest uh, again the biggest problem that we that i personally see uh, in the aspiring game developers is when they they are not even uh, in the stage of developing the game there's just a design on their plate and they keep on asking about how much money i'll make from this game so what i who what i what i want to tell you is that first 10 games are not for your for for the for filling up your box it's about exactly. filling, your, filling your you know uh, knowledge about how you're going to make the 11th uh, big game exactly so uh, we talked about the scope of the game and definitely there are big games like gta god and war god of war and all those games but we hear about people making single people and indie teams means four to five people making good games so definitely those four to five people must have some uh, unique skills otherwise if we have two programmers and we are trying to make a designed game it's not possible so what are the various components of a game and what kind of people are required to make such games if i'm making an indie team what should i look for in people who are going to join the team um uh, so uh, i'll tell you a little bit the process um, an indie game basically can be made by a single person also uh, you don't even need to have a team uh, for that um uh, but, but uh, but what i think is um, you need to first understand your your capability you need to find people who are in art and game design um and that 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 doesn't come with money it's more of uh, you know sharing your passion with people uh, mostly that comes with uh, with you know attending events or conferences um where you can find like minded people who who can you know come on board with you to you know make that particular thing for you uh, and indie games actually um, uh, have evolved with that process itself uh, you don't need to have a company for that you don't need to have a, have a registered company or uh, even an account for that um, just start with what uh, what you think uh, can you know be a great uh, game uh, and along with that just try and connect with people who can support you in that game um, uh, even when we try to do music for the game uh, it, does, it it's not happening in the studio right now but we try to connect with people who are passionate enough about the project that we are making and then we collaborate with these people uh, to to create uh, something good out of it uh, so i think uh, the most important part when you have to you know make an indie game it's basically connecting with people who are interested in your project uh do not go hiring people uh that's that's uh, that's not going to help you a lot um because uh, if you hire hire someone and, and it, there are always challenges there are always downfalls in a in a development process of an indie game uh you wouldn't find people uh, who stick to you if you if you're just paying them uh because there will be times where you are, you won't be able to pay these guys uh and and it's not and it, i think it's not even a right way to do things if you are making your first game the best thing is to you know find someone who can share your passion and make that game with you uh not that you you are you are controlling the game and someone is someone else is you know coding it for you um at least you need to have at least one guy who can be you know balancing out that whole uh, system for you you can freelance uh, or outsource the art piece uh, for that matter but if you're a game designer you know you have to have a strong support 
who can uh, do the tech part for you. So I think that's that's how um, and that's how that's how I, even I started underdogs. Uh, I was a game designer. I was uh, good at game designing, but also at that time I was good at art. So I found a friend who was good at uh, the technical part, the uh, the coding part. So together we started creating games. That's how underdogs was born. Exactly. So there is there are a lot of component. One is level designing. So level design is is something which I struggled with too. So how we can fix the level design and how we can understand the level design better. So Weber, what is your opinion on this? Uh, so see, this is like a very broad topic. Um, exactly. Level, yeah, level design is uh, if you compare Indian market, Indian uh, game developing companies versus the um, Western companies. Uh, I'll say that it's just um, in India, five percent of uh, the games or companies are actually into uh, level designing, or they need people who can do level design because all the games that you see are mostly, um, you know, replicated games, clone games, or um, so. Originality is very low, uh, but if you if you see as a career also, uh, you wouldn't find people who are skillful in just level design, but you'll find you'll have opportunities like a lot of opportunities in the Western markets. There there are opportunities where people are just looking out for level designers specifically. But if you try and do that and grow here in India, just uh, becoming a level designer, uh, you wouldn't go very far. You need to have a generic uh, knowledge or skills about everything. Uh, people are not looking for level designers specifically. They need game designers who can do level design, who yes. can do a lot of narrative design, who can do a lot of stuff. Uh, but if you're looking at a career in gaming as a level designer, you won't go far. You can do that outside India. There's a lot of scope. Uh, but when you, when it comes to you know tackling that part. Uh, there are not much of obstacles that even we face as level designers in India. Uh, if you are if you are making a, a, like a like a global title, then yes, uh, um, it has to be very smart. The level design. Um, uh, so what what we do usually is um, we try and create a work first, and then this whole um, thing is given to uh, the game designers to you know experiment a particular thing in that particular game. Uh, so I'll give you an example. Um, back in 2012, we made a game called Blow the Flow. It was it was uh, um, it was a uh, uh, a digital version of uh, we had this uh, you know we had this uh, uh, physical game with two buttons and there was water in it and then you used to blow that up and uh, the rings used to fall on that. Uh, uh, That's so, an epic childhood game, yeah. Yeah. So we we made a digital version of that, uh, wow. and for that we just used to, you know, we just made the whole setup, the cones, the rings, and then we just gave it to the game designers to you know experiment with uh, the things. Uh, the thing is, uh, in India, I personally don't think it's very challenging or as such, um, but there are plenty of tools. Uh, that can be used um, to you know to address that uh, particular uh, issue. Um, but uh, for us um, internally, it's unity, um, and we just provide that environment and the tools uh, which we have internally developed for a particular uh, aspect of the game. So we just give it to them, and then they tackle around with it. Uh, so uh, we, being the core, um, the core team in Underdog is ma majorly. Uh, experts in game design part. Uh, so the final call is for uh, from our end, but obviously the game designers, you know, they have a lot of uh, freedom to experiment with those things. Um, so currently, I don't, I don't, um, I personally haven't faced any issues in that uh, aspect. But it's, uh, it's pretty easy right in uh, right at this time in India. Okay, so. Uh... That's definitely logical. Whatever you talked about level designing, it cannot be covered in a single video. So most of the things are like that. Eh? We, what we yeah. are discussing here, and the idea is to go overview and everything, whatever we can. So uh, let's talk about game monetization because this is uh, the thing 
uh, you get paid uh, because of game monetizations and uh, there are ads there are in app purchases there are several ways of monetizing your game and getting money out of it so let's talk about some of the ways okay uh, so if you if you making a, a mobile game right uh, there are two two broad categories of a mobile game one is a premium game a paid game uh, which is like a flat fee you just go on a store if you want to play that game you just pay that particular fee of that game so like a like a one dollar or ten dollar it's a, between uh, that range uh, so you pay it and you start playing the game so that's premium uh, but if you're making a global game uh, it works in india as a market it's still growing it's not uh, that good because uh, indian audience right now the intent of playing games is increasing because of uh, you know the involvement of pubg or uh, casual games um so it's the intent is increasing but spending intent is not yet uh, you know to a level where people you know just put money on in the games and that is the part in in app purchases also but uh, paid games is category 1 uh, category 2 is premium games so we also call uh, them as f2p which is free to play games and premium games are basically um, a combination of um, ads and in app purchases so developers who make premium games can make money from advert advertisements in the game uh, and the second part is in app purchases in the game so i'll first talk about the in app purchases the in app purchases are the virtual elements in the game uh, so if you have a character in the game and this this character has like uh, various um, body armor or suits or clothing or, or whatever uh, the 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 look how it looks uh, if you have a car game uh, there is a vinyl there are there are paints on it you have to unlock those things at particular levels uh, or you can just you know buy those things directly with real money um now the design is usually kept in such a way that even if you don't spend on that thing you can still progress in the game but you need to spend time in the game you know to reach that level but if you have money you can just spend it and you know get get that particular thing uh, so that's in app purchase uh, in app purchase really works well in uh, the western markets not in india uh, as of now um, the the percentage is increasing for sure uh, the amount of people spending on it is increasing for sure uh, but it's not at the level it's like still 3 years behind us and china uh, that is what exactly. i feel uh, but uh, when it comes to ad monetization uh everybody knows the population of india <laughs> and the usage of smartphones uh it's like 40% of the overall population of the country uh people are uh, using smartphones right now because of you know low end devices available with uh good good um, configurations as well uh which can play all these games also the Uh, the increase of uh, you know internet usage because of uh, you know introduction to geo um on all those accessibilities right so um because of that people have started playing games a lot and due to that the ad monetization uh, is happening um, at a very good level uh, now in india and that's the major source of revenue uh, in india if you're making games for india but you can still make games for the global audience sitting in india that's not a nation uh, but if you focus on indian market that's that's ad monetization is what you need to do uh, when it when i say ad monetization i want to just uh, give you um, a brief of what it exactly is you when you play a game there is a banner ad there is there is an ad on top and bottom of the screen that is called as a banner ad uh, exactly. which which has like every so the 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 rates are calculated on based on ec ecpms so cpm stands for cost per uh, mill so mill is like a thousand impressions so every thousand impressions of that one particular ad will give you something between 0.1 dollar to 0.5 dollars in india uh, so that's the banner ad then the second one is the interstitial ad which is the full screen ad that comes on your screen which is an intrusive ad but it comes on a full screen uh every ecpm that you get for this uh, ad might be between 0.3 dollar to a to a dollar um and then the third one is the is a, is a video ad 
again video ad has two types which is one is rewarded video ads and the other one is a normal video ad which is skippable uh, rewarded video ads uh, has to give something to the players in the game uh, and they are not forced on people uh, so uh, let's say when you play subway surfer when you finish one round there is a, there is a win screen and at that screen you will see a button saying double your coins exactly. so that's the user's choice you're not forcing that ad to user but you let player click on that ad and the ad is played which is not skippable you, the player has to watch that whole ad for 30 seconds and once he uh, watches that ad uh, he gets you know double uh, he, he gets double the coins that he, he has earned um so that's that's the monetization right now uh, for you know ads as overall uh, there are also native ads that you can you know uh, blend in between your ui that people don't uh, get really uh, but you can do that 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 that's a, that's a smart ui ux kind of a thing that you need to understand uh, for using those kind of ads uh, but overall that's that's the monetization that you can do in the games right now uh, for mobile so there is something called game analytics and game analytics is a really important part of uh, after publishing the games analytics is really important so let's yeah. see, discuss that what is analytics um so i just want to uh, correct it first um game analytics of course is a very 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 important part of a game uh, but yeah. i would say it's not uh, important after the game uh, is launched it's actually uh, during the, the during the beta stage as well uh, i'll tell you why uh, because game analytics is just an sdk or a plugin that you integrate in your game while you're developing a game right uh yeah. whichever whichever tool that you use let's say you use google analytics or say game analytics or flurry you get a specific dashboard for that particular game you go on that dashboard and you check uh how many people are playing the game uh how many active users are there what is the day one retention day seven retention of that particular game so you can see every event uh in in your game if you have coded it that way so how many people have landed it to uh, to level number 2 level number 3 or level uh, win screen how many people have purchased it so everything at just you need, you just need to call those things in your game uh, while you're developing it but that's the dashboard that you have in front of you which you know uh, can experiment with now wh- why i'm saying it's important while in beta stage is because um right now you know you spend like 2 months 3 months in developing a game uh and you you cannot take a risk to publish that game to global audience just like that yeah. uh so what we do is uh, and majority studio do it there's there's a thing called a soft launch uh mm-hmm. which can be official which can uh, be just like a focus testing group but um we we do test the game with say 100 200 people first before uh getting it to a global launch so what happens is uh, when you do that it's just a private link that you give to the people to play that game you can track the progress of those people in that analytics how they're playing it what exactly they are doing it um and with that analytic improving your day one retention and day seven retention or uh, say session time and then realizing you know people are not going beyond level 3 there is some problem in level 3 you need to fix that problem first before you know so all those things you can do that with game analytics itself before even launching the game that is why i say it's important you know to uh, understand yeah. game analytics before taking yeah. the game live exactly and after game analytics i can definitely see so there are a lot of things apart from just game making of the game like how the game going to money how the game going to perform yeah. how the they is going to play the game and track the game are they going to ever be able to uh, land on the last level isn't it possible for them so there are a lot of things so uh, sometimes there are game publishers which handle some of the things so uh, let's talk about what is more profitable or what is more uh, for which kind of person it's profitable to sell it game to a publisher than publishing it yourself so what is the requirement for that okay so uh, very firstly i'll just tell you uh, how this works i'll tell you the model uh, of game publishing um so a publisher is a is a company who is already established uh, yes. who has a great network of uh, people 
playing their their games already uh, who has a lot of budget for marketing your game uh, who has connect with the app store guys the google and apple of the world so they have these connects right so that's that's a publisher okay when you are a solo developer when you are an indie developer um you uh, a lot of people have this kind of uh, uh, mentality um that i'll make a game i'll put in 3 months in development of that one game i'll put that game on the app store and that game will make 10 million dollars for me that is not how it works okay um the amount of time and money that you spend in developing a game you have to spend that much time and money in marketing your game as well so just for an example if you spend 3 months in developing a game uh with two people say 50000 salary every uh, guy you have spent like 3 lakhs on developing that game for 3 months you need to at least spend 3 lakhs in marketing that game do you have that money if you have that money great but you need to understand how to spend that money as well but you have that knowledge no you don't have that knowledge as of yet so the thing is it's very easy it's very safe uh if you are a new game developer uh if you are a solo developer the best thing that you can do is go with a publisher um where, like uh just a while ago i gave an example of you know working with games to win on their game and then learning that process that is what you need to do with your first game if you know your game is good if you know uh it's at least going to make break even profit for you uh you just go ahead with the publisher um to understand what publishers are doing with the game uh they what kind of sdks uh, ad sdks that they are asking you to integrate your in your game what kind of analytics that they are using um what is the process that they, they are doing what are what is uh, the ad campaigning what platform are they using to ad campaign your games you need to understand that whole process uh and then you can do it um uh, do it yourself in the next nice game that's just the secondary benefit of going ahead with the publisher but the primary benefit is they'll 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 you know spend money on your game when you when they take your game they spend money on your game they'll introduce your game to the app store guys to get your game featured on the platform uh they'll cross promote your game in their games which are already live in the market so um it's like a huge thing uh because you get a lot of exposure without spending a single rupee on your game uh initially so my my suggestion for a, like anyone who is new in gaming uh, and has made something i would definitely recommend not to go self publish first because it's a very tricky business it's because the uh, the thing is we know candy crush is making like 2 million dollars a day but you need to understand that candy crush is spending 800000 dollars a day in marketing that game now uh now there are experts out there who you know who can get the cpi low so cpi is like cost per install so when you market your game when you do a normal facebook ad for your game you need to make sure that every user that you buy uh you buy it for a very low cost that is when you will make money from that one user right so if you uh, happen to you know spend like 20 rupees on getting one user and that one user is not even making you 5 rupees you are at loss but there are experts who have cracked it who have cracked this one thing where they spend just 2 rupees on that one user and they make 5 rupees out of it that is the model of voodoo and catch up right so that why 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 these publishers are this successful is because they are spending that much amount of money with low cpis you as a solo developer cannot crack that uh, uh you know with your first game so that is where you know you can get along with these publishers and learn their strategies and then you can go ahead with your self publishing plus uh, one of the core and important thing is publishers pay you up front so there is a thing called as mg which is minimum guarantee so publishers if they like your game they uh, you know project a particular revenue that this game can make uh, so they give you that money so it can be uh, ranging from something between 25000 dollars to even 
two hundred thousand dollars. That's the kind of money that uh, publishers can give you. So if your game is good, if you know that it's it can make ten million dollars in uh, in 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 the market, right? Just go ahead with the publisher. He can make that kind of money for you, uh, rather than you spending money which you don't have. So uh, yeah, this is all about game publisher. Such a great uh, hack for this. Uh, Cracking that uh, game publisher thing, because a uh, lot of people struggle. A lot of people ask me these questions, so I asked you. So let's talk about gaming in India and uh, how people usually people see game gamer, a gamer or a game programmer, whatever, and how usually people react on such things. Also, how it's different uh, to choose a gaming career in India versus gaming career in West and all those things. um uh, it's still it's still not um, considered as a career in india yeah. um the, these are like few things that people like you me are trying to do and you know educate people about it um even i am running a youtube channel just to you know teach people about game development stuff what is happening in india right now because of the um, involvement of pubg you know a wave of game streamers coming on board uh we see a lot of uh, limelight going on the gamers and not the game developers you know so that is that is one of the biggest problems so when people say it it that these are two different worlds now if i want to make a career in gaming what exactly are you going to play games or you are going to just make games if you're going to play games this is what people are doing right now they are just taking pubg and playing it for 24 hours a day and they are they are doing good but that's not that's their skill for one particular game you're not great at all the games to be very honest you have cracked a code of you know aiming a headshot in pubg and then uh, keeping you know playing that game continuously that's it you're not a gamer gamer um, but that's that's there are like handful of people who do every kind of games but i think that is that career that uh, path has just started like a year or two years back it's just started but game development as a career making games as a career it's been like a while seven years i think seven eight years it's been uh, there in the industry now but it's still not considered as a gaming uh, as a career choice um so for me i think the limelight should be actually on the game developers and not on the game uh, gamers because these are like these are i think these are kids playing just for the passion of you know playing game which is not wrong actually but it's because it's huge in western countries um but i think to bring gaming as a you know core in the career sections in india we need to focus on the game development aspect more than game playing aspect because everybody can play games uh, not everybody can make games yeah yeah so in, in like in, I, i'll give an example today also if we try and play games at our our homes as well we get you know we get this thing what are you wasting time in playing games because even if we are running this company we get this thing uh, so that's the mentality of people right now in india uh, i see but i am i i like i feel really good when i see parents supporting their kids in you know uh, getting into game development um so because i i i keep on visiting workshop uh, in in institutes and colleges and see uh, parents uh, you know coming along with the students to understand what game development as a career is so it's but it's not yet uh, you know uh, to a level where uh, people are taking it as a career choice people are now trying to get into it uh, and uh, right now the obstacles are very less uh, to be very honest there are no obstacles to get into gaming apart from the society and the parents uh, there's no there's no obstacle for us back in 2006 right back in 2005 2006 google also was not able to help us <laughs> so there were no there are no companies in india uh, at our time there was only nazara and india games which were like at the peak right and there was no so there is these companies which are huge and there is no company beyond that like no company uh, fortunately we got like opportunities in these companies itself to work and you know we just knocked at the door and asked them to get in, to get you know give us internships and we learned our hard way through that particular thing 
but now you you can see 500 gaming companies in india you have a lot of opportunities to you know build your portfolio and then get into any of the companies exactly so well talking about uh, the companies in uh, india with who are game who are making games and game related companies so as in west we can see there are uh, colleges who are who have courses like game development courses in india they are but they are not teaching as uh, required the skills required they are not teaching so if i talk about the companies in india and if i talk about the companies outside so there is a lot of culture difference between these two so uh, even the professionals are struggling with the culture uh, culture difference between these uh, aspects of gaming so let's uh, talk about that yeah yeah so there is a there is a lot of uh, difference like um there if you say uh 10 companies in western market are building games based purely based on passion for that particular product 10 out of 10 let's say 10 out of, uh, like 9 out of 10 companies are are building games based on the passion uh, that they have for that particular ip or the product uh, whereas in India, you'll see uh, one out of ten companies doing that. Uh, the rest nine are building businesses based on uh, the methods that they can use to make money from games. So I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, there are huge companies, there are big companies who make money from telcos and OEMs, which is not even heard in India. Uh, they're just aggregating games, giving it to telcos. Um, there are companies who are just building, you know, consistent um a category of games um there are companies who are just cloning games um there are companies who actually um take a very successful game outside in the west and then they're just ripping that off uh putting some indian content into it and just putting it out there are companies who um who are just taking up engines and putting it putting an ip an indian ip like chota beam or you know more to butlu on it and just putting it out uh, there, there is a there is a lack of originality in concepts in India, um, and all I can see is only smaller studios, say two people to ten people company, uh, that kind of a studio are going into you know these huge leaps of creating original original content and innovative games, um, and there are only a handful of companies who are doing this. Um, so that's that's the biggest difference that I see. Uh, but if if we see bigger companies, you know, trying to make original concepts, that would be the game changer for the Indian gaming scenario. Uh, nobody also is getting into AAA quality games. Uh, even if even when they have enough funds and talent pool already with them, they just want to churn out you know smaller games, get get a lot of money out of those games. So uh, the major difference that I see is games is what. Western industry is doing business is what Indian industry is doing. Exactly, exactly. That's a perfect explanation. And uh, if I talk about game marketing, we already talked about game marketing a lot. So that, what the kind of game marketing marketing a publisher does. So if I talk about game marketing for a, a, an indie player, for yeah. a single person, so it definitely requires money. But we don't have money. How to do it in in very low marketing budget? How to uh, so, so so it's it's this is also like broad it depends on game to game um but i'll just give you an example of a game and I'll, i can talk about that um let's say um uh, um so so i'll just give you my example uh, only uh, i'll talk about skate lander because that's 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 exactly the marketing stuff that happened that took the game uh, up so um, if you have a mobile game, like we had a had a mobile game which was planned for Android and iOS, right? Um, uh, start building the, the 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 portfolio about the game. So you start with the social media angle. You do uh, a Facebook page, a Twitter page, uh, and uh, uh, a simple one page of website, uh, which has a mailing uh, mailing. Uh, thing to it so people can put their mails in and you can notify them when the game is out these are the three core important things when it come to social media you need to have a website uh, uh, a facebook page and a twitter page uh, and this happens when you are when you are developing the game uh, this is when you uh, when, when you when say if the game is three months uh, development time uh, 
after just one month of developing the prototypes and everything, you just have to start doing this at that time itself because marketing starts at a very early stage in game development. So you start with this uh, and use those Facebook and Twitter and uh, your website um, to promote the content that you're building, to uh, show what you're doing, do screenshot Saturdays uh, on forums, uh, figure out the forums that can suit to your uh, game. So if you have an uh, Apple game, right, uh, 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 an Apple game, you 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 put your game up on Touch Arcade, which is a very powerful website. If, uh, if you are uh, making an Android game, do the uh, uh, Droid um, Droid Gamer website, or, or there are a lot of other websites who support the, those kind of games. So start putting your content out in the market. Do not worry about you know somebody will copy it or uh, do those kind of things. So in our case also, we build that particular thing. Uh, we were we had Facebook, Twitter, and uh, a website, and we used to get this mailing list, right? Uh, we had no money. We had no money to market the game. So what I what I did was I started building uh, uh, an Excel sheet with uh, everybody that I knew who had an iPhone. So we, we were planning to uh, put the game out in the uh, Apple Store first. So in those three months, two months of development, everybody who I met. And I knew who had iPhone or Apple uh, tap like uh, iPads. I I I you know put their names and their phone number uh, in that Excel sheet. Uh, so I started building that. Uh, so, uh, along with that, um, I also uploaded it on uh, Touch Arcade. And uh, when we had a proper you know uh, gameplay of that game, uh, we created a video of a gameplay video, like a one minute gameplay video, and we put that video in the Touch Arcade forum. Uh, the moment we put that video on Touch Arcade, Touch Arcade wrote an article about that game immediately, uh, and that was very huge for us. Uh, that that article was, uh, you know, taken by 70 other websites because Touch Arcade was huge. You know, 70 other websites used that article and wrote their own article uh, by see, just seeing that gameplay video. Uh, and this game was when when we made we were making this game, Crossy Road was a hit just three months uh, before our game right and we the whole idea of using art style was getting influenced by crossy roads because it was voxel art which was very new at that time and we wanted to make a game on voxel art so we used that artwork and touch arcade wrote an article saying uh, crossy road meets skateboarding in the new skate lander so that was the news and it it went really viral right um it went so viral that the developer of Crossy Road saw the article. Uh, so Andy Sum, who was the partner of uh, Matthew Hall, who both of them made this game. So Andy and Andy uh, wrote to me when he saw the uh, video. He wrote to me saying that um, uh, I really love uh, what you're building and I I would like to help you guys. That is how it you know when we were at the last stages of finishing the game. I'll tell you, I'm not kidding. Uh, Andy Sum uh, helped us polish the game for the last 15 days of development. So every build that we used to make, I used to send it to Andy. He used to make changes wow. and send it to us. So he used, that is what happened for the last 15 days. And in those last 15 days, there was some award, uh, game hack um, awards going on. So we entered that competition. We won that competition. Uh, we won uh, like a very a small cash prize of around 10,000 rupees for that competition. But that competition sent us directly to the finals of uh, PG Connect, which was happening in Bangalore. Uh, and that was all, all free. So we went to PG Connect Bangalore just uh, two weeks before the game was about to release. Uh, we showcased the game over there and people were like uh, blown because of the kind of quality that we were building. Uh, Apple guys came to us, uh, gave us their cards, and you know we uh, we happened to write to them after that. And uh, two weeks later, when the game was out, uh, Apple featured the game in 130 countries. So you see, you see the process, right? It's we didn't have money, but we we did all that we can uh, could have done, you know, so to to get the game out to the people. Uh, also, the list that I spoke earlier, right, the uh, Excel sheet of people having uh, iPhones. I reached 320 people uh, in that Excel sheet. And on day one of the launch, I messaged everyone with the link 
to download the game and re- raid the game so the game got up in the charts uh, 3 weeks later the game was uh, top uh, ranking uh, so it was number 1 on ipad in russia for 2 weeks uh wow. if you, yeah if we then go on search you, youtube right you'll see 1000 more than 1000 videos of skatelander of people playing skatelander people even challenging each other so that was fun so i think uh, it's you you cannot you know just um, sit i will just make a game as a title and there are there are influencers there are youtubers out there you just when your game is about to finish just write to all these youtubers even if they have like 500 subscribers it doesn't matter just write to all the uh, all the youtubers who are uh, you know playing your kind of game so if you if you are doing a parking game just see what kind what you which youtubers are doing simulation games parking games and write to them um give them the free copy of your game even before it's out so do all the those kind of uh, stuff uh, which you can do write in forums um but uh, but see these are all things that you can do without money uh, but when it comes to user acquisition you you have to spend money on the games uh, but if your game gets you know attention with these kind of things it's great for your game uh, in the initial days so skate land is a perfect example is how to market your game well yeah so, <laughs> for sharing that experience it's awesome to hear and webho uh, let me talk about webho so webho already told you he has made games for uh, like hangama like uh, disney so webho has a, a decade worth of experience which he try to give you in one hour or so and he keep giving this experience on his youtube channel so please subscribe his youtube channel as well you must please. you definitely check it out if you are making games and webho let's uh, discuss some motivational tricks so people usually in gaming uh the gaming process is really complicated gaming process is really game cycle is long people lose the motivation of making the game they uh, struck with some another idea or something else or something happened and they drop the project so what is your hack what is the suggestion you want to give to the early gamers and uh, how do you manage all this uh so see uh, uh demo getting demotivated and then dropping the game i already spoke about it you know start something small and uh, you can you know uh, you need to know that this is something that i can finish uh, so that's that's one thing that i i surely stick to uh, for the people who you know get demotivated within uh, the development um, but there are two things that i want to tell um, one is for the uh, for the uh, new guys uh, who want to get into the gaming and the second one is for the uh people who are already there in the business and um, they are not finding the right path right uh so for the people who are you know already there i the ma- the major thing that i believe is people uh, that you work with um you need to create um, a good pool of people you need to be connected with a lot of uh, people um you cannot just you know run a company with money you you need to have belief in the people uh, that you are working with uh, you need to build uh, bonds and relations with the people because i think that that's the core of building a business um because see there are times when when gaming is still new in india and there are times when you uh, you'll not have money to you know run the business these are the people who will stand behind you to you know get that uh, passion of yours out in the market uh there's something uh, which is which is there's something called a scratch right you you need to have um strong connect with the people to you know um make them uh, work with you uh, on something that you want to build um so i think um knowing people um having this connect with your people uh, is very important uh, networking on the other hand is very important uh, meet everybody every uh everyone that you uh, can introduce yourself and be nice to everyone uh i'll give you a, a, a short yeah. story uh, on uh-huh. something hello yeah i can hear yeah so i'll i'll, I'll tell you a short story about this um why the uh, you know it's important to be nice to everyone and know everyone um uh see um there's there's the uh, just a funny story but i think it it would re- really uh, connect 
uh, just just thought of it right now. Uh, there's a there was a there was a CEO who used to work on a tenth floor of a building, right? Uh, and he and there was a watchman who used to stand um, stand at the bottom uh, at the at the main gate. Every time uh, this uh, this CEO uh, enters the building, he used to say good morning to this uh, watchman and go up, right? Every time he used to leave the office, he used to say good night and he used to leave. Uh, one for, and this used to happen every day, right? And they they didn't know each other, but that's the greeting that they used to do. And what I, one fine day, what happened is like uh, there's a fire that breaks out on the fifth floor, and the whole building is evacuated, and everybody leaves. Uh, it's not a not a huge emergency, but it's just for the safety of people that they leave. Uh, and this guy, uh, the watchman, realizes that the that the that the CEO of the company who, who works on tenth floor. Um, said good morning to him in the morning, but it's already ten o'clock in the night. But he has hasn't, you know, he didn't he he didn't recollect like he didn't uh, uh, remember the CEO saying good night to him. It's ten o'clock. It's eleven o'clock. He's still thinking, and then he realizes that he's he's still up there. So he runs up. He runs up to the tenth floor and he sees in one of the storage rooms this guy is uh, collapsed. You know, because of the anxiety, so he he takes him uh, from there and takes him to the hospital. You see the story. Uh, the moral of the story you'll you'll, you'll understand uh, is is there was no connect between between these people, right? But just because of that one small greeting that we he used to do every day, uh, this guy saved his life. You know, so. Being in an industry which is very small, and you will bump into each other every other day. It's a very small industry. You need to be connected with people. You need to have a strong connect. You have to have a great network of people, uh, which is what will help you in the in in growing uh, ahead. Because it's always a chain effect uh, that takes you ahead. Um, so that's that's what I can you know uh, suggest to the people who are already in the industry. Um, in the in the people who are who want to actually get into um, uh, in 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 the industry, uh, there's one one thing which I actually wanted to address. Uh, since I'm doing this YouTube thing, right? Uh, I get a lot of questions, uh, and pretty valid. The first question is pretty valid, and I love that question that people ask me is, um, how do I get into gaming industry? I want I'm very passionate about I am very passionate about getting into gaming industry. How do I get into gaming industry? That's the first question, and I start explaining them the whole process and everything. And the second question is the biggest screw up that they do. The second question that they ask is how much money can I make? Yeah. Let me tell you. Yeah, let me tell you. If you are here for money, just get out of this industry. It's not for you. This is this is the this is the real reality. Um, you need to understand as a as a if you want to make career in games, the first three two three years is for you to learn the whole process or you know to get into this. If you are just focusing because of the trend, because of the trend that the gaming industry is becoming huge and you will make a make a million dollars from a game, just get out of this industry. This industry is not for you. Um, and 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 because see they don't understand anything. uh and they just um just you know come up and say that um how much money am i going to make uh, uh from my game which is not even close to a bullshit game so uh, so i would say that they, they should understand that uh, it's important to learn the process first before you know jumping on to uh, other things exactly exactly so it is it is a great time speaking to you about the games and uh, i never had this much of knowledge uh, heard from anyone so thanks for coming on the show and uh, i saw most of your videos on the youtube and i shared them on the channel as well yeah. and people yeah on the channel people are there and who are working in the game industry who are working in the extended reality industry so uh, keep helping them as the way you are already doing and uh, thanks for coming on the show thank you thank you for inviting me so this was vabhav and we did an amazing amazing show about game industry and uh, working on the extended reality you must also see the game industry it's definitely connected mm -hmm.